So whatever pile of, of BS you're, you're dealing with, whether that's all engrossing, right? Whether it be fundraising or whether it be litigation or whether it be potentially some large biz dev deal, don't let it pollute the sort of general narrative of what's going on inside the startup, right? You need to like firewall that inside one guy's life and he needs to lose sleep and, you know. Or she. Yep. Uh, or she or whatever. Yeah. And lose sleep and like literally get an ulcer over it and have yeah. everyone else kind of keep on going on the treadmill without thinking about it. And that's right. absolutely critical to do. So you have no money. Right. No money. You were going for a $4 million valuation. Right. Then it suddenly drops to $2, two. Million because one of the investors was like, hey, if I got to catch this knife, I need a better deal. That's right. So you have no choice but to take the lesser valuation. That's right. But you build a model. I thought this was one of the most candid things. You build a model and you realize you cannot survive the legal fight. So right. explain what you did in the model. Right. We had a thing that we used to call the death clock, which was we had a, an Excel spreadsheet that, you know, you know, basic MBA type stuff that had, you know, basic revenue and expenses. And like everything, you can project out revenues. We had no revenues at the time. And you could see, you know, it's a plot of money on hand, cash on hand. It's a cash flow statement. And you just saw, you see how quickly it, you hit the ground. And it, like, I think I, I make a joke. It looks like one of those diagrams you see in a plane crash news story of yeah. like, oh, you know, the plane was level and then suddenly it starts crashing. Oh, and then before you know it, it's like a fuel soaked hole in the ground yes. with a bunch of dead bodies. Bodies, right, and that's and no matter how you sliced it, no matter how much you lied, there is no way we could possibly pay for this lawsuit. So what did you do? Uh, I lied. And so <laughs> I lied. I lied. God, I lied. So genius. <laughs> um, I I concealed the spreadsheet from my co-founders because it would have yeah. just depressed them. Um, and of course, I rationalized it to myself from the argument we just said earlier, which is yeah. I have to firewall them from this trauma because sure. there's no way. And then you get creative. We get creative, right? Um, and then. There was a weird deal um, in which I had to basically convince Fenwick and West, which was the other big law firm. We're getting sued so by good. Wilson Sonsini, and it's Fenwick. Um, I said that joke about the French mathematician, but I probably shouldn't say it on air. Um, the one, um, yeah. so, uh, you know, the French mathematician, they ask him, how do you do your work? He's like, well, I tell the mistress I'm with the wife, the wife I'm with the mistress, and then I go to, go to the office and, and calculate. And so yeah. basically, I told the lawyers that we had raised money, therefore we could pay for it. And then I told the investors, you've got to invest in this company, because uh, I've convinced the lawyers to actually take equity in exchange, so right. we're not going to be out cash. And neither of those were actually true. We hadn't actually raised the money. Wow. And the lawyers hadn't smoke actually- Smoke and mirrors. Yeah, complete smoke and mirrors. And uh, somehow, um, we managed to wrangle uh, Ted Wang at Fenwick, who, who himself- Who is one of the most famous attorneys. Uh, absolutely. And, People and, love this guy. And he's, and he's, and he's very he's principled. Legit. And it, I think part of the reason why he did it, and, it, and it, I actually feel, one of the few people that I feel that we did, didn't do justice to was, was Ted Wang. And in so the I'll, book or yeah. in, li in just in, uh, in life? No, in life. No, in the book he's, he's barely mentioned. No, yeah. in, in, in life. And I, I'll, apologize, I'll apologize on air for Ted Wang. Okay. Because at the end of the day, obviously me bailing on the deal probably was not ideal for agro. Well, explain the, the deal you struck with him because right. as somebody who came from Goldman Sachs, right. the description you give of how you did this deal <laughs> yeah. is, it's, it's incredible, but go ahead. Explain right. the I deal mean, that you struck once with. Once a quant, it's, always a quant. Like yeah. You can't take, you know, you take the man out of gold, but you can't take gold out of the man. Once you start seeing everything in terms of option theory, you realize everything's an option, which yeah. it is. Um, basically, the deal was the following. Um, if, if Agrox survived, which obviously was a, ma a massive question mark, we assumed that it would die, um, then um, Fenwick would actually own some, I forget the exact, but some percentage, some large percentage actually, of Agrox in exchange. They had warrants, basically options on the company. Right. Um, however, we had the embedded option, um, the, the loans were actually puttable, which means um, we could basically pay them off at the original valuation. Uh, whatever the, the stated amount, we could always pay it off in cash. Right. And so if you succeeded and raised another round, it's as if you could... Another, as I'm sure you're aware, another underhanded tactic in entrepreneurs often do is buy out earlier investors with later investor money sure. at their earlier valuation. Right. And, and if you raise money at the angel stage, many smart investors, Saka was among them, wanted to make sure that they always have follow-on rights. They can never be bought out. At pro rata. Yes. Pro rata, exactly, pro rata rights, right. exactly. Because, you know, obviously if you're raising suddenly a 20, you, you'd rather sell that equity more expensively than cheaply and you can just pay them with cash and get out. Right. And so that was basically the deal that that Fenwick had, that we could basically buy out the, the note that they had effectively So Fenwick had. gives you a quarter million dollars in free litigation. Yeah, exactly. You negotiate this. They get some warrants. Right. But the truth is, if you fail, they lose the 250 in services. Oh, they lose everything, of course. They right. lose everything. Right. If you succeed and they successfully defend you and you raise money, they just get the fees back. Exactly. So there was no upside. They should have negotiated with you. If you pay back the 250, we still get the warrants. That's right. You would have taken that deal. 
Right. I mean, like I say in the line, we sold them a one in a million lottery ticket to win 250K for 250K. It's right. ridiculous. It's a horrible trade. Right. Right. But that, yeah. But they didn't do it for that reason. They did it because Ted is principled and he yes. felt like the that mirth, right. mirthy, mirthy, was um, breaking the rules. Breaking the rules by suing you guys. By suing a small company. Yeah. By suing a small company. So he and took was, advantage of his, of his principled stance. Right. Yeah. Hey, everybody, let me take a moment to thank our partner, Audible. I am in love with audiobooks and spoken word audio products, and they have over 180,000 titles in every genre, and you can access them from anywhere, on your phone, your iPad, and um, WhisperSync allows uh, for voice to sync between your Kindle and the audiobook. I don't actually do that a lot, but I have some friends who do that. I just like to read. Uh, this is my big trick. I have a hard time going to bed sometimes. My mind is racing. You might be like me sometimes, and you're like, hey, I would like to go to sleep, but I don't want to watch television or be on my laptop or my iPad, because then your eyes get all those rays, and you're totally awake. What I like to do is I put my eye mask on, I take my Amazon Echo, and I say, Alexa, play, and I say the number of things on Audible, and it works. So I've been using Alexa when I'm going to bed. It's right by the nightstand, and I just listen to an audio book, and I put the timer sometimes on 20 minutes, 30 minutes, because I know, hey, I'm going to fall asleep in 20, 30 minutes. If I don't fall asleep, I can just continue uh, listening because Audible's got this great feature where you can um, do 30 minutes. And if you don't like a book, it's guaranteed. You can just exchange it with no questions asked. I've given you a ton of different um, books, but one of the things I get asked by a lot of my friends is, hey, how do I get better at poker? It turns out that Annie Duke, very famous poker player, as you know, uh, wrote a great book, Decide to Play Great Poker. And she reads it herself. It's a strategy guide to loan limit Texas Hold'em. And I have to say, you know, having listened to this and uh, asked, told some friends, hey, listen to this. It gives you a really good idea of how to play poker better. It is a great listen. Go ahead and get my pick of the week, Decide to Play Great Poker by Annie Duke. Uh, by going to audible.com slash twist, audible.com slash T-W-I-S-T, and you'll get a 30-day trial membership just by going there and signing up. Uh, and if you listen, if you're a super fan of the show and you've been listening for a long time, upgrade to that platinum. The platinum plan is amazing. You get like 20 credits a year. Amazing. And I buy tons and tons of books. There is a listen guarantee. If you don't like it, you can exchange it. There are no questions asked. You've heard a lot of my other uh, recommendations, The Man Who Knew Infinity, The Hobbit, which I listened to with my daughter over and over again, Sapiens, uh, Smarter, Faster, Better, just tons of amazing, amazing books on Audible, ways to get smarter, and ways to expand your horizon. That's the number one thing. You know, we get very myopic being in one industry, technology. You've got to expand your horizons and understand more about the world. And I find when I'm trying to understand more about the world, it really makes me a better entrepreneur and an investor. So go ahead and visit audible.com slash twist. Thank you so much. I'm a real fan of Audible. Audible.